All right, guys, I'm going to talk to you about the great kingdoms of Africa. And most of these occur, you know, in about the time of the Roman Empire up through the Middle Ages. Um, and so what you need to know about Africa, I don't like that one there, but I'm not doing much to get rid of it either, um, is the geography plays a great part in the history of Africa. The north, obviously, the Sahara Desert makes, you know, crossing a difficult challenge. And then you have all these rainforest areas and then you have desert at the bottom. Um, also, the coast of Africa, while Africa is huge, the coast isn't really hospitable for, you know, a lot of ports and harbors and things like that. Um, the first kingdom we're going to deal with is Axum. And Axum was the great trade center. Um, you know, it, the action was there, and Axum is the name of the kingdom and the main city, and it's in the Ethiopian highlands there. So they're about the Horn of Africa, and, um, you know, modern, where modern Ethiopia is today. But if you look on this map, you can see that Axum really could control the trade coming from the Mediterranean through the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean. And, you know, everything in the world was going through there. And they also had great deposits of gold and iron and salt, all in demand items. And so they became really wealthy. Um, if you see here, though, they're also kind of unique in these African kingdoms. This will be a Christian kingdom. And so you have lots of, you know, like this, you see this cross here made out of rock. That's actually a church. It's a building in the ground where they've carved into the rock. And so you have some unique uh, remains from Axum. All right, so I'm going to do these three at once, which is going to pick up our speed and make you happy, I hope. All right, West Africa, there are three kingdoms you need to be familiar with. Ghana, Mali, and Songhai, and, you know, that's the order they were existed in. It's more or less the same area. Uh, you know, also alphabetical order, Ghana, Mali, Songhai. Just kind of remember that they're all very similar, and they are going to control and become really wealthy by controlling the trade across the Sahara Desert. Uh, gold for salt was the trade. And it was, you know, gold, the most valuable thing in the world to people. And salt, you had to have it. It was really hard to come by back in the day. You know, you have to have it to survive. And so controlling that trade and controlling all the gold made these places really wealthy. Uh, Mali and Songhai, the second and third kingdoms in this area. And if you see right there, they're on the Niger River, right there in the bend. Uh, Mali and Songhai will be famous Islamic kingdoms. And one thing the trans-Saharan trade is going to do is, you know, spread Islam across the northern part of Africa. Um, and so they become really wealthy. You know, Ghana is replaced by Mali, and Mali will be replaced by Songhai. Um, but controlling this made these the wealthiest of all places. Um, Mansa Musa, the leader of Mali, is considered the richest man in the history of the world. You know, he became something of a legend in Europe. You know, there's this guy who has a mountain of gold, and when he goes on his pilgrimage to Mecca, he, you know, influences the economies of everywhere he goes just because he, you know, can hand out gold so freely. Um, he is the most famous of all. In Songhai, the most famous leader is probably Askia Muhammad, who is, you know, really expands the empire. Songhai will be bigger than all of continental Europe. Um, and he is has this, you know, which is unique at the time, a really tolerant a view of religions and, you know, kind of has an idea of freedom of religion within his empire. Um, Timbuktu. Under Mali and Mansa Musa, Timbuktu becomes the greatest city in the world for a while. It becomes the center of learning and has, even today, one of the oldest universities in the world is in Timbuktu. And so all of these places, Ghana, Mali, Songhai, West Africa, and that's really the most important part is knowing they're in West Africa on the Niger River. They control the gold for salt trade. 
Last place we need to know about is Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe is in southern Africa. It is between these Zambezi and Limpopo rivers. Um, amazing stonework, the kind of stuff you'll see, you know, with the Incas and all these, you know, without mortar, these stones put together and they, you know, stay together, still together today. Um, Great Zimbabwe also there on the coast led to a lot of trade across the Indian Ocean. You'll find in the archaeologists will find stuff from China and things like that in the digs that they have at Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe had lots of gold and gold led them to be really wealthy. Um, the name itself means stone enclosure. And it is, you know, a lot of these stone ruins are the, around this area. And they say the main city itself had about 20,000 people at its height. And then around 1500, they mysteriously abandoned these great cities they built. Um, it's one of those great mysteries. You know, people have all sorts of guesses about why they left these cities they built. These cities were so impressive that when the Europeans find them, they're like, oh, my gosh, must have been, you know, Phoenicians or Europeans that came down here and built these back in the day because these are such amazing, you know, stone structures. Um, so Great Zimbabwe, you know, will lead to the name of the country Zimbabwe later. But Great Zimbabwe, think southern Africa between the Zambezi and Limpopo rivers allowed them to, you know, trade across the Indian Ocean. And really, anytime Great Zimbabwe comes up, it'll be, you know, a picture of a stone enclosure, which is what it means. Um, and so, if nothing else, the locations are important. Anytime you get asked about them, it'll be about the locations. Southern Africa, Great Zimbabwe. Western Africa. Oh, went too far. Sorry, dragons. Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Western Africa, in that order. But generally, they'll be grouped together. They're very similar economically. And then... In Eastern Africa, you have Axum, which controlled the trade going through here, which made them really wealthy. That is what you need to know about Africa. I wish I knew a little bit more right this second to tell you, but then I'd be wasting your time. Have a good day.